Welcome to our lecture online. Some of the advanced JEE test problems are very long, meaning the text is so long they put a lot of stuff in there just to make sure that it cannot be misinterpreted. But because of that, it may take several minutes just to read the problem itself. And here's one of those examples. It deals with angular momentum and the problem reads, a thin rod of mass M and length A is free to rotate in a horizontal plane about a fixed vertical axis passing through point O. A thin circular disk of mass M and radius A over 4 is pivoted on this rod with its center at a distance A over 4 from the free end so that it can rotate freely about its vertical axis as shown in the figure. Assume that both the rod and the disk have uniform density and they remain horizontal during the motion. An outside stationary observer finds the rod rotating with an angular velocity of omega and the disk rotating about its vertical axis with an angular velocity of 4 omega. The total angular momentum of the system about point O is m a square omega over 48 times n and they want us to find the value of n, presumably an integer. So they provided us with the drawing. Here we have the rod of length a rotating about point O. It has mass m. We have a disk with mass m rotating with its center a over 4 from the free end of the rod, rotating at an angle of velocity of 4 omega. So we need to find the total, well, angular momentum. To do that, we need to know the moment of inertia of both the rod and the disk. So the moment of inertia of the rod would be equal to, well, it would be 1 third the mass times the length squared, and the length in this case is a, so this would be one-third m a squared. The moment of inertia of the disk is equal to one-half the mass times the radius squared, so in this case that's equal to one-half m, and the radius is a over four, so it would be a over four squared. That would be 16 times two, that would be equal to one over 32 m a squared. All right, so now we have both the moment of inertia of the rod and the disk. Now we need to find the total moment of inertia of the system. There's going to be three components to it. Um, did I say that? I meant to say the angular velocity, the angular, angular momentum. Let's, let me retract that. We're trying to find the total angular momentum of the system. There's three components. We have the rod, the disk going around with the rod, and then the disk rotating on its own axis. So first of all, the angular momentum of the rod, which is equal to i times omega. So in this case, this is equal to one-third m a squared times omega. So this is equal to one-third m a squared omega. So notice we have m a squared omega in the numerator, which is what we have there, times one-third. The angular momentum of the disk rotating about, so we'll call it d sub 1, the first motion of the disk, which is it's rotating about the, uh, the point O, and so that's going to be equal to i times omega. Now in this case, i is not going to be this. It's going to be a point object this distance away from O. So in this case, it's going to be uh, m r squared times omega, which is still omega like that. In this case, r is going to be 3 quarters a. So in this case, that is equal to m times 3 over 4 a squared times omega, which is equal to 9 sixteenths, and I'll call this a big M, because that's the mass of the disk, so it would be m a squared omega. So there we have that m a squared omega again, but in this case we have 9 sixteenths. Finally, we have the angular momentum of the disk, the second motion, which is the rotation about its own axis, which is i times omega, which is equal to, i is going to be 1 over 32 m a squared times omega, in this case omega is 4 omega. So 4 divided by 32 is 1 8, so that's equal to 1 over 8 times m a squared omega. So now we have to add up all the fractions together because we want to see 1 over 48 times n. So now we add 1 third plus 9 sixteenths plus 1 eighth. So the common denominator here would be 48, that's why we have a 48 out over here. So 3 goes into 48 16 times, so we have 16 over 48 
plus, that goes into 48 three times, so that gives us 27 over 48, plus, that's an eight, plus this goes into 48 six times, so six over 48, which is equal to 37, 43, 49 over 48, times, of course, ma squared times omega, so we need 49 over 48, so n must therefore be 49. And that will give us the total angular momentum of the entire system. Notice how we have to calculate the three different motions to find the angular momentum like that. And that is how it's done.